there are really two different ways to do this question. I'm definitely going to be the lazier, do the lazier way here. Um, but I'll show you the other way because there might be cases where we can't do the lazy way as easily. I instantly recognize the topic. Uh, the equation has exactly one solution. Um, so whenever they talk about the number of solutions, I know to ask myself, do I have an X or an X squared? Well, I do have an X squared, meaning that I could use the discriminant to deal with this. Or I, I don't really need to because they gave me options and a solution when we're looking at a single quadratic is really just an x-intercept. So I can just kind of guess and check this thing and see how many solutions it has by looking at it. So I already took the liberty of typing it in so you don't have to watch me do that. But notice I'm leaving off the equals zero, but it also is offering me the slider. So I'm going to hit the C to get a slider. It's going to default to one, which isn't an answer anyway, but you can see that this particular version of this quadratic has two solutions where we have x-intercepts. Now, if I put the equal zero here, those solutions are still there, but they're going to look like vertical lines. Now, I could, I could leave the equal zero because basically what it's doing is it's solving the equation for me and it's displaying the answers as vertical lines. But I'm worried about using that method on this because what if the two lines are really, really close together, but because I'm zoomed out, they look like one line, right? Or what if the lines are really, really far apart and I don't see one of the lines because it's off the screen, it's off the zoom. So I don't want to deal with that uncertainty. Whereas if I get rid of the equal zero, I see the whole parabola. So whether there's one solution, two solutions, zero solutions, I'm going to see it because I can just see where those x-intercepts are regardless. So I, I want to see the whole thing. So I have a whole lesson on this, but it, it basically I don't like the, I, I want to see the x-intercepts. But now we can just guess and check the answers, right? So let's try three. Oop. Three. Looks like it has two solutions, right? So there you go. That doesn't work. Let's try zero. Still two solutions. Nope. Let's try negative 25. Oh, that looks pretty good. Now, I could zoom in and, and see, and yeah, looks like one solution, right? One x-intercept looks like it's just bouncing. Maybe I got to zoom in really, really, really tight, and it's, you know, just having, it's just missing, or it's just, you know, kind of going over it, but it's also easy to just try the other answer, which I think is going to give me a very different picture. If I zoom out, there it is. There's my parabola all the way down there. It definitely does not have an x-intercept. It's all the way down there. So that's it. C is the answer, done. So I would definitely do it that way. The guess and check here just means I don't have to worry about algebra at all. I still need to conceptually understand what I'm looking for, which is uh, an x-intercept basically. But yeah, because they gave me answer choices, this is not particularly hard. You're just looking at a picture. But if they didn't give me answer choices, then I wouldn't really wanna go to Desmos because I could play with that slider, but negative 25 is kind of far away. So. I don't know, you can play with it, you can kind of realize you've got to change the values and, and keep sliding, but I don't know, what if, what in that case, what if it is a fraction, right? Then I might not see it because maybe the slider's only working integers. So I, I don't know, I would rather just know how to do b squared minus 4ac. That's our discriminant that always tells us the number of solutions for a quadratic without actually needing to find those solutions. And from memory, I know that if there is one solution, the discriminant is equal to zero. Okay. If there's two solutions, the discriminant is greater than zero. If there are no solutions, the discriminant is less than zero. You got to memorize that. So now we just plug things in for the A, B, and C terms. So the B term is 30. So 30 squared minus four. The A term is negative nine and C is C. So we're just going to solve for C here. Again, I could go to Desmos at this point, turn that C into an X and then let it solve it for me. But let's just continue with the algebra here. So 30 squared, I believe is 900. It is. So 900 plus 36C is equal to zero. Uh, let's, I guess, subtract the 900 over. So 36C is equal to negative 900. And look, you know, even if I'm going to do algebra, I might as well do all the work, might as well show it so that I don't accidentally make a mistake. Uh, C is equal to negative 25. Done. Same answer. So it ends up not even really being that long here. But I don't know. I don't know where these other answers come from. Three, zero, negative 53. They might be what you get if you just lose a negative somewhere. I, I genuinely don't know. So my advice is, um, you know, keep that in mind when you're deciding how to solve something. Is Desmos going to prevent a careless mistake? You just got to make sure you, you know, type the equation right. But otherwise, we can see what's going on. Um, I would always, you know, I'm good at algebra, but we all lose negatives from time to time. It happens. So I'd rather not take that risk. 
if you did get this wrong, please tell me why, you know, if you got one of these other answers, was it because of some sort of careless algebra mistake? I, I'm curious where they come from. Right now, off the top of my head, I don't see it. And I, I just genuinely don't care. I figured it out. I know two ways to solve it. I don't care about how not to solve it.